there, baby. Son of a bitch. God, those are some ugly as well. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? We're working on the chopper today. If you wanna stay more updated, more timely updates, uh, go follow me on social media. Uh, we don't film for YouTube every single day. I do filming uh, with my phone and post a lot on Instagram and on TikTok. So it's Yeti Machine Co. on Instagram, Yeti Machine Co. on TikTok. Go there, follow, like, all that stuff. So, anyways. We are finally cutting the neck out of this thing. I actually picked this jig up from uh, Scotty over at Junior's Handmade. Shout out to Scotty, he's awesome. He built some awesome shit. When I got it, it had the fixtures for Big Twin. And uh, obviously I'm not building a Big Twin, I'm building a Sportster. So I had to make my own engine fixture. If I was just hardtailing this bike, we wouldn't need the jig, we wouldn't need the fixture. This would be pretty much done besides these buggery ass welds. But because I'm extending the neck and adding some rake and doing some other things, we still need to hold this whole frame together. So that's why I made this fixture. We got it spaced up off of the jig itself. We're bolted up tight to the back motor plate, up to the front. And then I also added these little standoffs to keep everything kind of centered in the frame. So that when I cut here and cut here, I don't really have to worry about anything moving around. The big thing is, is that we want to make sure that Nothing twists, nothing moves to where the engine doesn't fit back in the frame or, you know, it goes down the street all cattywampus. We don't, we don't want that. We want straight, clean bikes. That's what this fixture's for. I'm not going to have anything on YouTube about it because um, I posted it mostly on my social. But again, if you want to go on Instagram, you can see the whole process. Uh, on TikTok, you can see the whole process. Anyways, so that's all done. So now we are ready to start cutting it. Boy, oh boy, this is, this is where shit can go south real quick. If you're wondering why I just did this ugly ass cut around here, um, this, this whole section back here is gonna be removed. So the idea is, is that we're gonna go up and out. So I'm actually gonna cut around the coping where Lobra had welded this original backbone, but I need to get all this out of the way um, before I do that so I can fit the pipe. So that's why this cut looks like absolute shit. It doesn't matter at all. So again, this is just material removal. It doesn't matter. Always make sure you keep your finger off the trigger when you're changing your wheel. Don't unplug it though. That's a waste of time. <laughs> make sure you keep your cutoff wheels across the shop though. Got that long neck, baby. Woo! That probably blasted you. <laughs> that probably blasted the microphone. Goddamn. Done broke it. All right, so now I'm going to uh, adjust our jig so you guys can kind of see where it's at. Two inches out. And two inches up. We're probably going to go a little bit more up than two inches, but it's all for how she looks. This is choppers after all. It's for fun, it's for good times. Alright. We'll get this guy. Set to as close to 90 as possible. This takes a little bit of finessing. Crank it down. All right. 
Nice. Originally, I wanted to go two up, but a little bit more than that. So it's actually 60. This is almost 60 degrees, minus 90. It's at a 30 degree. Five. We want to. We want 35 degrees. So that would make that number. 55 instead of 60. So we're gonna lean this back a little bit. Don't wanna just loosen this thing up all the way. Boom. 55, baby. I just gotta loosen these guys up. Slide her on up a few inches. There's our stock mark. Let's see what looks good. That is roughly where it's going to be. A little bit more than two up. Probably closer to three. Three and a quarter. Hell yeah. So the whole point of doing all this, and I understand why they have it, but I've always hated on a lot of hardtails, there's that kink where it comes down. But I really like when you get a straight backbone. So that's kind of the whole point of this. Hope you like it, Josh. This is inch and five eighths DOM tubing. We're gonna cope it to the profile of the neck. Then we're gonna slip it in between these copes and Bob's your uncle. What's poppin' y'all? How we doing? Happy whatever day it is. I think it's Tuesday, I don't know. See me, I got my got my apron on. Ain't gonna be eating no sparks today and catching nothing on fire. But anyways, let me show y'all what I'm working on. So last night, I got the neck cut off of here. So stock rake's 30, leaned it back five degrees, puts us at 35. But the next thing I'm gonna do, actually the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna be reusing this neck because it has the VIN number on it and I already have it and there's no reason not to. So. We're gonna cut all this shit out, clean up this tube. This is not a casting, this is actually a steel tube. Um, so that'll be great. And then after that, we're basically going to cut out the material that was on this lowbrow hardtail so that I can make this backbone all one piece. So, party on. So, got the old shit cut off the neck. Smoothed it out pretty good. Just gotta take your time when you're doing this kind of stuff. We didn't wanna really get too much in the material. Had a little nick there when I was cutting it, but that should be okay. Now, you may be asking, Jeff, why the fuck wouldn't you just buy another neck? And I'll tell you, because of the VIN number. Now, most people would say, oh, well, you can just restamp it or whatever, and yeah, maybe. But I live in California, and uh, unfortunately, there's kind of a war against motorcycles in California, and I just, I don't want to give anybody any reason to uh, hassle Josh when he's on this thing. So that's why I'm reusing the original neck, and I mean, honestly, it took me about an hour to do this, so realistically, it's kind of a wash. Didn't really save any money. Um, if I were to just buy one that's done or get one made. So that's why we're reusing the original. Next step is going to be getting rid of this portion. And uh, yeah, let me show you. So as you can see, <clears throat> we got the rest of the backbone out. We got this one chopped out. 
kind of see how it's going to line up. And then next, I got to remove the uh, inside tube on this point. Now, as you can see, I cut real close to the weld. So I'm just going to kind of go in there with my cutoff wheel nice and easy and remove this piece. And then we'll be ready to fit the new backbone. So I got a little ahead of myself and I didn't film it, but we notched our backbone, trimmed to fit. Not too bad of a fitment on that notch with that uh, $60 Harbor Freight tubing notcher. Got this thing all fit. Pretty damn straight if you ask me. This thing is gonna be tall and long, awesome. So I'll get this tacked in, and then uh, that probably is gonna be it for today on this thing. And then tomorrow, we'll start working on that. We are back. Got to see some of the footage of me uh, working on this thing via my phone, and now we're back with a real camera. We've got a brand new backbone. Um, like I said before, we've stretched this thing out two inches. We've gone up about three and a half, uh, a little bit more than we wanted to, but the idea behind that was that we could make this backbone parallel with these back legs. Um, so I think it looks great. We also added in a new single down tube up front and we are in the process of tying in the uh, bottom part of the frame up to the down tube. So uh, after we're done tying in this side, pretty much all we got to do is guess it up top at the neck and uh, the frame will come out of the jig. I'm still gonna have to make an upper motor mount. Um, I may, we'll see. I may put the motor in the frame while it's in the jig and just get that set up, so. Anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, went over to my buddy's son shop, Impact Tech. Shout out to Impact Tech. He actually bent me a uh, 180 turn out of this one and a quarter inch uh, 120 wall. So what I'm doing is using these angles to create these tie-ins. So next thing I'm gonna do is kinda cut some of the fat off this thing. So we're hand coping these. I hand coped this one. It came out halfway decent and hopefully I can get this other one halfway decent too. Obviously we want it to be dead even. So. I'm sure there's a more scientific way to doing this, but I myself am not a scientist. Just got a marker in your eyes and a cutoff wheel. But we'll make it work. And it'll be pretty sweet. So we're coping to inch and a half, right? So if I set my cut here, obviously, there's not gonna be any meat rolling over to this side. So we're gonna start, leave some fat on it. We wanna make it, again, we're eyeballing shit and I don't have a bandsaw. If I had a bandsaw, this would be easier, but I don't, so I just gotta figure it out. We wanna make this cut parallel to this leg because as you can see, this leg is parallel to this leg. And basically just work it in till we get the radius of the one and a half inch tube to match up while also not going in too far and leaning it in or having it too far back. I sound like an idiot trying to explain that, but that's how my brain works. I want to try to get it as straight as possible. I guarantee you I'm not going to get it perfect because I never do, but get it close enough to grind in. Not too shabby. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for what we're doing right now. Again, we have more meat on this thing than we need. But the idea, so as you can see, it's kind of leaning out. So we are gonna slowly, with our carbide, bring that in so that this line and this line are parallel while also maintaining this radius. This is the fun part.
Another little tip when you're doing this, we really don't want to take any material out of this side, right? So I like to use uh, a marker and kind of go over this edge. And that way as you're cleaning up, you can see if you've already hit that spot. Because like I said, you don't really want to hit these edges uh, too much at first. Because if you blow these out, then you're going to have a big gap when you go to weld it. Over. <laughs> getting there it's kind of hard to see but this gap here versus this gap here you can see this is just a little bit wider so we got a little bit more to lean this thing in that's good though that's what we want we want to take our time and slowly work into the coping because the better you get this fit up the easier it is to weld it all together So next thing we're going to do is on this side, I use a piece of uh, one inch bar stock as a plug that basically goes from this part to this part. Now, I don't know if it's necessary, but it definitely makes it stronger and a little bit easier to line up. The only problem is this is one and a quarter inch uh, 90 wall tubing. This is one and a quarter inch 120 wall. Now what I did on this one, so I actually just put a spot weld at noon, whatever this is and whatever this is, three of them, to kind of take up that space and center it in the tube. And probably not the best way to do it, but I'd usually make a plug with two different sizes on a lathe, but I don't have a lathe in my shop. Uh, so we're gonna have to do it this way, I'll show you. Pop a little hole wool in this guy. So, in a perfect world, this one inch diameter solid bar would fit in here, but it's a little bit deformed uh, because it's on a bend. So, I'm basically kind of shaving this down and then I'm gonna pound it into this joint piece, put a rosette weld, and then we'll get it fitted into the frame. This just makes the joint a lot stronger having a plug in here. Let's see if this is gonna work. Smack it in there. I won't be able to get a plug. I mean, I can kind of rosette weld it, but it didn't get into that tube very well. So it's a little bit too close to the bend on this one. Oh, gotta clean those gouges out. Um, but we'll leave it in there. It still makes it stronger having it slugged. So I'm gonna pop a hole in this side. Tack to the down tube and then send it. That's a little trick. If you move it while you're arc is going, it makes the metal liquid and it moves around a little easier. That'll do, pig, that'll do.
pretty straight to me. What I like to do with this kind of stuff is try to put a tack, you know, two or three tacks on it to keep everything together. That way when I go to blast a bead here, it doesn't move somewhere else and so on and so forth. It just makes it a little bit stay in, in place a little bit better. Clean the discoloration off. That's it. Just gotta add gussets, but frame's fucking done. Got the main frame done. Got the uh, down tube all welded up. I think I got it pretty damn good. I was a little quiet, a little nervous. I haven't uh, built a frame myself since I was doing my People's Champ bike. And um, towards the end, I kind of fucked that one up. So I was a little bit nervous doing this one, but I'm hyped, came out good. Everything's straight, everything lines up, at least as far as my eyes go. And last time I checked, they're not crooked so uh the frame as far as the tubing goes is completely done we're not adding any more tubing but i am going to be adding a gusset up here um this is just kind of a rough oops, this is just kind of a rough template um and then i'm going to be doing i'll be cutting it out it's not just going to be flat and then i might add a little tiny guy in here um, but right now i'm just making this this template out of a chunk of cardboard i had laying around and That'll at least give us the rough shape, and then we can cut out um, a piece of plate. I got some quarter inch plate I'll probably use. It'll be nice and strong. And then once the gusset's done, the frame will be completely finished. And then uh, hopefully we can do a little stance check. Now this is completely and totally just eyeballing it. Cut this out and see how it looks. Probably don't need a gusset. It'd probably be strong enough, but I'd rather it be too strong than not strong enough. I don't want to put Josh in the dirt, so. <laughs> Harbor Freight Special C clamps. I really need to get some like proper welding clamps, but. I want to say these are like five dollars a piece. <laughs> Can't complain. shouldn't have done that. I should have put that in a drill motor or something. Nah. 
nice. Sweet little gusset. The old Yeti swoosh. I'll take it. All right. No. Oh, it scared me for a second. I thought the frame fucking cracked while I was welding it. There's just the line. Ooh, I'm about to get fucking pissed. Boy. You heard that little ting, right? Yeah, that fucking. I mean, I don't know why. It doesn't even make sense. There's no reason why it would fucking crack. Oh. God damn it. Fucking stressful, dude. <laughs> I saw your heart drop. I'd fucking flip this whole shit over and leave. <laughs> I'm out. Good night. It's gonna be a cool, tough little bike, dude. Josh better not fucking sell it. You're not allowed to sell this bike. Unless someone's dying or yeah, pretty much only if someone's dying. That's the only reason why you'd be allowed to sell this bike. He sold the last one I built for him like right after I finished it. <laughs> Actually, the guy that owns that bike hit me up the other day. Um, he's bringing it back because that internal throttle took a shit. So I'm never using that internal throttle again. And I don't remember the brand. Otherwise, I'd fucking air it out. But I can't remember the brand I got it from. But definitely not using that style again uh, we got an internal throttle coming from lowbrow it's a little expensive but the reviews look good i watched their little uh tutorial video on it and it it uh seems pretty stout so we'll see you guys will see when uh when i get it mounted up see if it's worth the shit i'm assuming it will be those guys have good shit so one thing i can do is i can weld with either hand i'm ambidextrous at least with welding they're both shit. <laughs> Un mas. Last weld. At least before I do the motor mount. Hell yeah. That is going to be a bad motherfucker. All right, y'all, that's it for this time. This frame is completely and totally welded, save for our upper motor mount and the front motor mount, but I'm not going to do that until I'm able to get the motor in the frame. But all the structural welding on the tube work is done. This thing is almost ready to come out of the jig. So really hyped on the progress I'm making on this thing. Do me a favor, go to Instagram, Go to TikTok and follow me, Yeti Machine Co. Both of them. It's all Yeti Machine Co. Um, if you could, give me a like, give me a comment. Tell me what you think about my work. Uh, talk some shit. I don't really care. Just tell me what you think. Have a good one.